explain to, to me where we are now. What we've done, Russell, is we've come from the front of the administration building. So we've left the front of Leafston Asylum. We've come down what, you, what you at the time was Asylum Road. It's now known as College Road, but it changed in 1949. So we've walked down there. We've entered in where everybody would have entered into the asylum back in the 1860s, 1870s, and 1880s. We've come in through the service entrance where the gatehouse would have been. We've turned left. We've just recently passed where the, um, we're on the pathway where the original fire station would have been in, in uh, 1963 when they had their own fire department. What we've done is we've come to a junction in the roadway because in 1932 when they took over the uh, St. Pancreas orphanage that was across the road and the two industrial schools that were there um, they wanted to train up uh, some of the, the uh, patients that were here at the hospital so they decided right we're gonna take them across the road but they didn't want to travel all the way across the road with three four hundred people twice daily and everything so in 1949 just after 1949 about 1950 the NHS decided for safety reasons we're gonna build a subway so what they've done is they actually dig a subway underneath College Road Road, which is still here today. So if you want to follow me, we'll go take a look at it. Yeah. All right, so can I just can I just clarify it? Is this just been basically filled in or you could literally quite get under? What we discovered without yeah. without the knowledge of my employer at the time is we were curious because in 1949 when they did this, there was a story that they actually allowed some of the patients to paint murals along the side of the walls going into the subway going underneath the road. Um, so we thought, well that would be great if we could actually find that. So what an associate of mine did. Uh, we, we got some shovels one day uh, and uh, we actually did some digging and you can see the hole is still there. And what we've done is we have actually have found some of the original um, uh, paintings that are on the side of the walls. Unfortunately, they did just fill the ends in, so what we believe is if we did dig down far enough, we could get in there to the point where we could clear it away a little bit and with some lights and some uh, photography equipment, we could record what are the paintings down there. We haven't been able to do that yet. A lot of paperwork involved in doing something that much of an excavation. An archaeological dig in this park uh, it takes a lot of time to convince people to allow you to do. But you can see the subways here, it would have handled uh, two to 500 people every day coming back and forth right underneath College Road. It was here for uh, right up until 1994 where they did just fill in the two ends and everything. Uh, it's a, the size of about uh, 50 meters in length. Uh, and it's a ramp structure goes all the way underneath the road. So that's how they got people back and forth. Um, and if we want to go from here, I can show you where one of the uh, original wards were. Yes, please. I'd really yeah. appreciate it. Let's go. Thank you. Where we are right now, Russell, is would have been the very first building, uh, very first ward that Leafson Hospital would have had on this side of, of, the, of the park. Um, there were two sides to the, to the Leafson Hospital. Uh, this would have been the men's wards over here, and then a bright across from us would have been the women's wards. They were three, uh, three stories tall. Each floor had 60 patients, 100, 180 patients per, per ward, per building, and there would have been six buildings for both of them, so 12, 12 times 180, and that's how many people were housed here when they first wow. opened. Now where we are, we're standing right approximately where the very first men's wards would have been, and this would have had the floors of a Kiwi, Kestrel, and Kingfisher. And we also believe that this is where the people that really needed to be secluded from the rest of society, from the rest of the hospital, would have been kept. Um, we also believe that this would have been the location where Aaron Kosminski would have been uh, kept while he was here at Leafson uh, Hospital. So uh, the, all the buildings were connected by catwalks. Uh, it took over 35 minutes to feed everybody uh, from the three different kitchens that they had in the hospital. Uh, so it was a very large location, very much a, a lot of people lived here. Um, there was over uh, 2,400 people living and working here at all times. Uh, so uh, they had to take uh, 42 acres of, of uh, uh, local uh, farmland just to feed everybody. So that's what had been going on right here. Wow, thank you, yep. thank you. So we can see this is literally where Aaron Kosminski would have been housed when he was incarcerated in Leeson Asylum and obviously now no, no longer here, but this is, would have been the location. Thank you. Okay, so we've walked to the rear of uh, Leeson Asylum now. And Martin, explain to me where we are here. This is one of the areas of the hospital that would have been the farthest north of everything. So this would have been out towards where they did all the gardening and everything. Thing. So the last building you have before you get into the 42 acres they harvested to feed everybody at the hospital would have been the Iris Ward, which is also known as the Isolation Wing. Now back in those days in the 1860s, 1870s, if you had any of the most known common you know, contagious diseases or you thought you had a contagious disease, plus you were committed to a mental
dental facility, you would have ended up here. The nurses um, would have trained in the schools uh, here on site for about two years. If you were assigned to the isolation wing, you would have lived uh, in a nursing uh, facility just behind us here uh, on the other side of the wood line, and you would have worked here and you would have gone back and forth, uh, never going back into general population, um, because if you're exposed to any kind of contagion diseases, they wouldn't let you back into general population. We do have one recorded record here of a nun who actually did that for about 37 years until she retired. So this is just the last building that you would see before you got into uh, the very deep uh, farming area of the hospital. So isolation wings, so you're looking at things like smallpox? Smallpox, uh, anything that they didn't know about, uh, rubella, anything they thought was contagious. Um, we also, on site here, they also did have two tuberculosis wings because back in those days, the uh, treatment they thought for tuberculosis or any lung-borne uh, diseases was to get them out you know, into the fresh air, get them out into the country, and uh, three miles north of Watford was considered way out into the country back in those days, so that's where they'd bring them uh, you know, to be treated for things like tuberculosis and that. So. Okay. And the cholera outbreak? We had a, a, an alleged cholera epidemic, uh, which I investigated a couple of years ago uh, and did come to find out that they did request uh, in 1898 a uh, sum of money to research the water system that fed the hospital because that's allegedly where the cholera epidemic came from. Uh,